I know before I prefer not to go on about my faith here endlessly. There are a number of channels on YouTube where people seem to be using them as holy roller type channels. And I'm not really sure how effective some of them are. There are a few that are actually quite well thought out with people who are quite good speakers and quite motivational and quite good at conveying their thoughts. And then there are some that seem to be more along the lines of um, let's use YouTube as a hellfire and damnations uh, preaching spot. But having said that, I did find this article, which has popped up in a number of venues and a number of sort of um, places. And I'll take it here from the Catholic Herald. Call for married Catholic priests will find an audience, says former Irish president. Leicester United Kingdom, Mary McAleese, the former president of the Republic of Ireland, has backed calls for the Catholic Church to end priestly celibacy. Similar comments were recently made by an archbishop close to Pope Francis. McAleese, currently Chancellor of Trinity University, spoke to the Irish newspaper after the Archbishop of Malta, who serves as an adjunct secretary to the, of the Holy See, is diacastry for the doctrine of the faith, called for a lone a priest. I'm delighted that the Archbishop came and said it out because he is regarded very, very highly by pretty much everybody in the church, McAleese told the Irish newspaper. This has become something of a battleground issue in the, in the church because the number of vocations in in Western Europe is certainly minimal. And there are a number of churches served in the UK and Ireland, but where the priests are mainly from places which are Catholic from, and I dislike using the term, but I'll just use it for convenience in this case, the third world, Africa or places like Sri Lanka and so on. The problem is of course, those priests are no less priests than an Irishman or a Spanishman or a Frenchman. And many parishioners don't really mind them and get on perfectly well with them. Although they, you will find some, some parishioners do express a certain reluctance to be, and uh, how shall we say, have certain dislikes based on certain um, tangible qualities about such priests. I'll go that far. There is, it must be said, a certain imperialistic quality in Mary McAleese's remarks in that regard. We don't have to draw all the priests in the Catholic world from Western Europe as we once did, where we were exporting priests outwards. Priests can also come to us. But if we do want vocations from Western Europe, well, yes, we may have to consider... Um, <laughs> whether moving towards something like the Eastern churches and the Eastern Catholic churches role where the married priests are allowed is something that will have to be considered, especially when you look at Ireland, where in recent years, there have been years when there have been less than a dozen vocations in the whole country. You can't really possibly sustain a national church on that. You can't, a church that's serving three or four million people cannot be sustained on that. Let me go through this article bit by bit. She also noted that Pope Francis agreed there is no formal church doctrine on celibacy and marriage for priest for the priesthood, and then he discussed how future pontiff may change the rules, so he has decided not to do so. There is indeed, as far as I'm aware, no formal church doctrine on celibacy and marriage for the Western Church, although changing it would also be a major issue and involve a major amount of logistics and all sorts of problems at a practical level. McAleese told the newspaper she believes the most interesting possibility is the next Pope of what she called the excellent leadership in Belgium and Germany. Uh, I wouldn't say I was the most, by any means, the most ultra-traditional or trad Catholic in the world, but I'd probably be dismissed instantly from such organisations as laughably left-wing, but Germany's Catholic leadership does not strike me as um, excellent leadership. It strikes me as a bit all over the place, to be quite frank. McAleese served as president of Ireland, a largely ceremonial position from 1997 to 2011. She has clashed with church leaders in the past and was barred from a conference for attending a conference taking place at the Vatican in 2019. Yes, infamously, where she had an infamous back and forth row. 
a long time critic of the church's position on human sexuality, which is related to her excellent leadership comment about Belgium and Germany, which I don't need to tell any informed viewers um, where the German church has particular views on homosexuality, where Mary McAleese is going to clash with them. The former president, who has long described herself as pro-life, admitted she voted to change Ireland's constitutional prohibition on abortion in 2018 referendum. An abortion that saw bitter and horrible debates with much shouting and grumbling and horrible things said on both sides. Speaking about the opposition to marry priests in the global south, she compared the situation to Ireland 100 years ago, where she claimed young men, often surrounded by poverty, saw the church as a route to education, a job, status and influence. And we know where that ends up. Um, not always, Mary. That's a very big generalisation. Where you ended up with some some priests who shouldn't have been there and we should have, ne- well, well, frankly, should never have been admitted into the priesthood because they did indeed just see it as a route out of poverty and tried to use it as such. And we, there were also priests who were, were perfectly good at their jobs and perfectly capable and perfectly capable administrators of parishes and perfectly competent and reasonable people. I can remember both growing up. It's there, there does seem to be a kind of overkill on this at times. I don't have these horror story memories of um, being attacked by rabid nuns going to Catholic schools and so on. Perhaps that's just my life and I was lucky. Yes, they were quite harsh and strict. And yes, I totally accept there was abuse that should have been got rid of and that the church needed shaking up and down in Ireland because it became a de facto arm of the state, which is not a useful situation for it to be in and was actually harmful to the church and the state. She also claimed that the state as quo and celebrate priests is maintained the Catholic church will be looking at the Western world in 30 years where there will not be any priests. Yes, Mary, in the Western world, as I point out, the Western world is not the entire world. The Catholic church is, as the name implies, Catholic um, it covers the whole world. There are we can train priests from elsewhere. Um, so I, I am really in two minds about this situation. I would be more of a mind to support a transition to married deacons than I would married priests. The married priesthood would create an immense amount of logistical problems, such as well, it's all very well to say it. But who pays for them? The priest has to make a living, and if he has kids and a wife and so on, eastern parishes are normally much smaller than in the the West than ours, and eastern parishes are normally set up around a model that will allow for this and have historically evolved around a model that will allow for it. It's one thing for a Ukrainian Catholic parish to have this. If I suddenly try and adapt a Roman Catholic parish to it, well... There's going to be a lot of logistical problems and issues there that Mary is ignoring for in the and just seeming to be skipping over. Uh, as to the excellent leadership of Belgium and Germany, that's something I think that would deserve an entire video all of its own.